Hello, everyone. It's Michael Jacob with Unleashing Intuition Secrets, joined once again by Ole Demigard. We're going to talk about, uh, you know, looks like they're they're mapping out uh, another area here in uh, Florida for possible direct energy weapon attack. So uh, Punta Gorda, is that where you were talking about? Yeah, if you remember, right, I think it was like two interviews ago, I was pointing out uh, Cape Coral as uh, a very possible next target, uh, very similar to the Lahaina. Uh, I mean, horrible, horrible if it happens. So I think we really need to do everything we can to expose it in time to stop this madness. So so there was this laser mapping of Cape Coral, and they were, they've were they been following very similar steps as in Maui, the, the sort of like at least six, eight months before the, the building up before they went live in August last night, last year. And uh, so Cape Coral is interesting because it's it's also everything that is needed for that attack is right there around the corner, including the U.S. Space Force, uh, who were the ones, the culprits, if you ask me, which I can more or less swear on that they were the ones that carried it out on Maui. Mm -hmm. So uh, here we have another observation of a woman who contacted me. She said that she was out walking the dog, I think. 1 a.m. in the middle of the night, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., something like that, in Punta Gorda, which is just north of Cape Coral. Okay. And she saw just, uh, I think it was last week, that they were doing a green laser mapping of that area. So we have a similar or an area there. Also where we had, uh, if you remember the name, this strange name on the U.S. Space Force uh, website, uh, where the name of this uh, uh, soldier, you can't see the face, but the name is Coffin, which I find is quite an odd name. Hmm. And uh, on that website, there's been multiple of these uh, pointers to upcoming attacks. And Coffin is also very close to Punta Gorda. Uh, you know, it's it's in that exact area, uh, north of... Uh, of the Cape Coral and north of Tampa as well. So they're pointing in that specific area, I think, if I'm reading these uh, signs correctly. And just once again, I don't want to freak people out. Of course not. It's just that if we do not uh, get the light on these conspiracies, they will they will be able to carry them out. So the more we, we pull the curtain and say, we see you, we see what you're up to, also with Operation Blue Roof in the area that has been massive, uh, where the blue items in Lahaina at least were not affected by the laser. So, um, yeah, I just want to point out that. And also with these bizarre drinks, the Mountain Dew drinks uh, that have uh, po been pointing out, you had uh, uh, the Maui Burst. Then we had uh, uh, here recently the Liberty, uh, Mountain Dew Liberty, where they're pointing towards the Statue of Liberty, which I've been pointing at for, for quite a while. There's been a lot of these things pointing towards this uh, Statue of Lucifer. And uh, now also, if you look at recently, maybe you can uh, find them, there's been like lightning strikes uh, at the, the Statue of Liberty, which is like, okay, it's a high building, so no problem with that. But a normal lightning goes like that. It comes from a very powerful... As far as I know, with lightning, as it's like you got the source from above and then it forks out downwards like that. So the power comes and then it forks out like this, meaning that the source came from above and then forking down towards Mother Earth. But the, the photos of the Statue of Liberty and also from the World Trade Center or the new, the new tower, you've got a similar thing there. But the the source seems to be coming from from the statue and then forking out upwards, hmm. which I find like, what is that? Maybe you can find some photos of these uh, lightning strikes. And then, uh, of course, they have the American flag uh, in the in these photos and so on as part of whatever. But it's uh, I find that odd. You also have uh, this movie Civil War where the main poster is the the torch that uh, he's holding and but there's there's been so many of these uh, pointing towards uh, the statue of liberty for uh, uh yeah at least the last 4 or 5 months so this is why I'm 
I keep pointing there. And we also have this Mountain Dew, Dew D E W, uh, Liberty one. And you had the Star Spangled uh, one also that I would say point towards the the Baltimore Baltimore Bridge collapse or attack. <laughs> and then we now have also uh, one called uh, Baja Baja Caribbean or Caribbean Baja, which I think could be a pointer towards uh, Cape Coral in that area. So if you if you watch, uh, yeah. Can yes, you see uh, this the, is the one, one you're the... talking about? Yeah, it looks like. Yeah, no, there's there's several of those, but it's like mm -hmm. forking upwards. Can you see that? It's not yeah. the way. If you see another lightning strike, it goes from above and then it forks down, out downwards. Here we have like there's a source from inside the statue. God know what that would be, but uh, please correct me, anyone out there who's specialists on on. Uh, lightning strikes but as far as i know that is going the other way around yeah it's not really that unusual for it to get struck i guess it's struck like <laughs> no i'm i'm not talking during... about it yeah i'm not talking about it getting struck i'm talking about that it's forking out the upwards yeah that looks that looks really strange uh this one and and you got another one if you take the world trade center the also in new york you got this exact same uh, anomalies that it's it's like it seems like the the power source is inside and it's going upwards mm. Mm. just pointing things out because there's so many weird things uh, happening so it's like uh, it's good to be observant i think yeah and this is uh punta gorda uh i'm gonna uh back it out a little bit so here's cape coral where they did the uh mapping before Fort Myers, yeah. this area right here is where the last uh, uh, hurricane came in and really did a lot of devastation. So, uh, and then this is also, a, yeah. So it's more. very, it's uh, like we pointed it out. People were, became aware of it. Then there was a time delay. I don't know if that has anything to do with each other, but sometimes if you caught, you catch somebody doing something naughty they go under the radar for a little while, wait, and then they go back to and, and do it. I don't know if that is what occurred, but I just want to point it out uh, since we're in the exact same area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's definitely a possibility, you know, for us to point this stuff out and then they just like lay it, let it lie low and then, then they spring it on us. So that's very, oh. very often how it works. Yeah, and also at the very uh, southern point of uh, of Florida, you have multiple places with the name Coffin, 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 uh, right there also, which is once again Baja Caribbean. If that, uh, I'm I'm pointing stuff out. I don't know if it's correct or not, okay. but I see that you you got a blue shirt on. I got a blue shirt on just in case. Uh, of that's the... right, and you got a blue background. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a blue anti, house. Anti laser. <laughs> yeah. Very good. So how you been? Very good. Very good. Um, busy. Been doing a lot of shows. How about yourself? Yeah, similar, similar. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I see. Uh, point... You know, I get I get uh, updates on uh, you know your your posts and stuff like that. You you have been pretty busy. Yeah, I I do like two three per year. No, per week, sorry. Yep. And uh, I just want to point out, there's a lot of people that have contacted me regarding Cody, uh, Cody Snodgrass, so the uh, former Black Up who went whistleblower, yep. who I was going to have on the show and so on. He he's, he's really a close brother to me. Unfortunately, he passed, uh, like, I think it's six weeks now. And uh, Oh, wow. Hmm. Yeah, he was... Uh, after he stepped forward as a whistleblower, he they really hit him very hard m multiple times. And one of them, uh, these uh, was in a car crash, like a front on head uh, collision where he he barely survived. He managed to recover from that one, but this, he had uh, health problems all the time after that. You know, with his spine and and stuff. And then, like three day, three years before. Uh, three years ago 
he was up in a mountain cabin in in uh, outside Colorado Springs where he used to be up there and there were these two planes that came down uh, and made an X right on top of it with like chemtrail X right on top of his cabin and there was this thing falling down on, on him where he, he managed to get into the cabin but he was still sort of in the spray wow. and uh, the very last email I got from him just a few days before he he died he described that uh, that uh, he had uh, he was contacted by and let me read it to you uh, by a navy seal that was involved in the uh hang on two seconds sorry about that do 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 do, do. um He says here, uh, got a call today from an ex-military guy. He said he did a show about Nord Stream pipe, about the Nord Stream, Nord Stream pipeline operation being done by a SEAL team. Two of them died by accident recently. A crop duster plane then sprayed his house very, very low, whitish gray spray. He went uh, to ER, got IV antibiotics, very, very sick. His wife sick, two kids very sick. There was no agricultural areas for 50 miles around him. They did the same to me in November 2019 at my mountain cabin. Uh, but two military jets made a perfect X over the cabin. I got a metallic taste in my mouth, gray spray, got very sick, uh, ER room, IV antibiotics. Three days later, I almost died. I think they're using this stuff to silence whistleblowers, among other techniques. The doctor said if I'd been anywhere else but uh, at the hospital, uh, then I would have died. Three three years later, my cancer shows up. Another doctor says it was something you inhaled. Maybe they killed me already. Love and peace, Cody. And then three days later, he died. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Brutal, brutal. Yeah. But th this was a yeah, guy. There's a lot of had... people that have been um, uh, aerosolized, and I, they have some kind of they have some kind of device where they can put on a glove that just looks like a your normal hand or something on it, uh, like a clear glove or whatever. And uh, I got I've been hit. Other people have been hit by that. I got super sick, almost died, and. Uh, some other people have died, uh, aerosol, aerosolization and whole groups where everybody in the group, uh, got sick, several people in the group died mm. and, um, truthers, truther events. And then, um, this one woman, Sheila Holmes, who's a very, very spiritual woman. She's been on my show many times and written many books. She was at an event and, uh, she almost died and four other people that were in her group died. And one of them was a congressman. So there is uh, definitely, you know, a big pushback. Uh, and they, they do use aerosolization, uh, direct energy weapons like we, we know, and then uh, mm -hmm. all, all kinds of uh, other means. But they do it in secret. They do it so that there's no trace. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's, it's an ongoing thing. It's, I, I spoke to Chip Tatum, the CIA whistleblower once about these things and he said whatever it is whatever product they can come forward with more or less it is also turned into a, a weapon aerosol weapon in any you know like it, it, <laughs> good things they turn into bad stuff they oh, yeah. they weaponize so many different things and uh, i had a friend in norway hans gorder who was uh, an amazing guy i made uh, several uh, trips to Utøya, where this mass shooting happened, and and we did uh, uh, several interviews with him. Amazing guy, and he died very similar to this. He had an event in his home, and then I'm not really sure what happened, but uh, people that were sitting next to him uh, got very sick. One died, and he died also, and not at that not at the time, but afterwards they got super sick and. And then uh, it right away, it was uh, pumped out that he had got COVID. And within 
half an hour after he died or very quickly after he he passed the police were there or people in uniform were there and confiscated his hard drives and his computers and stuff like for me that smells a long way you know when mm -hmm. somebody says thank you and goodbye in weird ways and then his office is cleared yeah yeah no really really sad he i really loved that guy so two two great guys that unfortunately are no longer with us hmm. it's a rough ride sometimes it really is, it, really uh, is. It, mm -hmm. it it gets to me this with cody also i really miss him but yeah, it I is the way it is i miss we didn't get to do a show with him yeah we were going to but he just got sicker and sicker hmm. but i did i think i did a yeah at least 100 shows with him together with him incredible information from the inside but i mean he was very aware he used to be a bad boy as bad as they come and so karma wise he did a lot of stuff then he had two near death ex experiences yeah. sort of in an instant understood what he had been doing and then spent the last 20 odd 22 3 4 5 years of his life paying back the bad karma and i think he did a wonderful job absolutely incredible um as a spiritual healer he was helping everyone for free you know during this 25 year period he helped a lot of veterans he did a lot of of uh yeah native people no he was part cherokee oh wow and uh yeah anyway so now he is yeah among us on I Other think realm. maybe before yeah. he was heading that way, but I think really think he got his ticket changed. I think, yeah, it sounds like it, definitely. Yeah. So there's so others that are like that too, like James Files, you know. So, um, you know, they they turn and they try and do the the right thing and expose stuff and. Yeah. Yeah, James Files, James Files. Um, yeah, so I'm very happy with the interviews that we we did with him. Yeah, me too. very important uh, witness. I think he's. Mm -hmm. I know people keep this in the JFK community. There's this this constant discussion about him, where it's like if he saw the because he said the motorcade never came to a full stop. I mean, is that the best you can come to totally disregard a witness like that, especially since he's been in so many other operations and so many other assassinations, so many other historical events where he can be the one that can explain it to us. I mean, come on, give the guy a chance. What the hell? I, I don't get it. I don't get it. This sort of like, yes, but he didn't say that or he didn't say I'm never, I'm never caught him with a lie, anything like that. And he's, it's like he said, I don't remember. It didn't care. I didn't care. I w I've never read a book. He fell asleep during the JFK movie. This is how interested he is. You yeah. know, it's, it's the rest of us are obsessed and he couldn't care less. So, which I also think that is to his benefit because uh, mm. he, he doesn't know he, and he, it's like if he was somebody planted there to spread disinformation, he would be yeah. so groomed. Yeah. He would be so full of knowledge. He would know the details. You, you, exactly. you can't have that level of knowledge. I, I would have, I would have known it right away. Uh, his, his level of uh, expertise is on my level, but he worked for the, the bad guys. So I, yeah. I, and I was, I was stunned at that, but it really makes a lot of sense you know, that they would have a whole, a whole other team. That's how they can assassinate all these people. You know, the Clinton body count. I mean, it's gotta be a team of people like James files out there. If you look at many of us that are in this world of are trying to understand these things, we just see a number. Okay. Around this 300 people have died mysteriously or 28 yeah. have people are, but very few, at least the way I see it, are looking into who the hell took them out. Yeah, yeah. Who did it? Who yeah. did it? Because we're looking at another assassination or another stage accident or another uh, stage heart attack. I mean, these are assassinations. So who did them? 
But very few people look at that. They just say, well, they gave the order. But there are these teams of of cleaners or head cleaners that do yeah, the yeah. wet work. And like, like and, you, you like go up against the Clintons and you say something bad about it. You think the Clintons show up at your house and like kill you? It's like, it's ridiculous. Uh, there's yeah. some obviously teams of people. And I think you brought up uh, an excellent point there's teams of people that move around and do these false flag events. And I think there's teams of people that travel all over the world to do these assassinations as well. This is murder incorporated. Yeah. yeah. CR rifle. <clears throat> they, they got operation 40, many different names of similar, but it's like, I spoke to Chip Tatum, who was the head assassin for George Bush Sr. Uh, he was part of 14 uh, assassinations. And that is what he's talking about. I think this guy has been around for a long, long time. He was also yeah. wow. the pilot for Nixon, uh, all the presidents from Nixon up to George Bush Sr., uh, flying them. All, he was doing all kinds of, of stuff. And he said that the world of assassins on a top level is very, very small. It's a small little sure, group yeah. mm -hmm. because it takes a very special mindset and, um, I don't know, very messed up or professional or I don't know what to call them, but I mean a very, when you're on that level, yeah. when you have a very special mindset, like a sniper who, who you have a special, need to have a very special mindset maybe to stay in the same spot for two three days in a in a row i mean who can do that many people after two minutes it's they start getting itchy it yeah. takes a very special and here among uh, top assassins he said very small little group and but they're moving around moving around moving around mm -hmm. so just because something happens in japan or in new zealand or in toronto or in new york or in stockholm doesn't mean that it uh, i mean have you seen businessmen travel around taking planes counting Absolutely. collecting I, point points on I flights used to, i used to travel around quite a bit you know and as one of the top guys in uh the seal teams so we had we had a very small group and uh super highly trained very focused uh if if there was going to be a target we were like we're going to go in and there's nothing going to stop us. We will accomplish. And I, I, when I talked to James files, I was like, he, he had that same mentality. I, I know that mentality. I've been around people like that. So uh, I was like, wow, it, it just, it kind of, it kind of blew it. I have respect for it. Um, but you know, on his side, he looks at, you know, guys like me, it's like, oh, you're doing your thing and we're doing our thing. We have our missions. You have your missions. Uh, our group of people are very well connected. Your group of people are well connected. So it's like, wow, like, is there is it really a good sign and a bad sign? It's like it's 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 tough. Any kind of killing period though is bad, right? I've been very very fortunate where I've. I've never had to kill anybody. And a lot of people are very stunned by that because I've been in combat quite a bit. And I think the reason why is because I'm, I'm at that very high vibration spiritual realm. And so that has kept me from that somehow, some way. And then there's those that are like, they want to kill, you know, that yeah. dark, that dark side and they kill a lot. Mm. Michael, can I can I ask you something? Uh, it's uh, I'm I'm doing uh, some work with a, a group in Australia. Uh, mm -hmm. We are doing uh, special webinars about uh, different topics, and there it's a group called Living Free. They're doing amazing, absolutely amazing. And uh, one incident that uh, they've asked me to look into is the Port Arthur mass shooting in, in uh, Tasmania. Right in 1996 i think it was mm -hmm. and in that where it was the the biggest mass shooting done by a single person up to that date it was uh, and as far as i can see it was planned to involve america as well yep. uh, because there were two bus loads of americans on the way there but they got delayed by the ferry the ferry got delayed so instead the the shooter 
went into a cafe and killed a lot of people there. And then he went on. There, there were two things. And there's this uh, young guy uh, at the time, um, Michael uh, Martin Bryant, who was blamed for it. He had long blonde hair and the shooter had long blonde hair. But can I ask you, as a professional, I just want to check it out here. So uh, the weapon that he, it said that he used was a semi-automatic AR-15, 5.56-millimeter uh, caliber. Right. Mm -hmm. And so in the, in the first shooting inside this cafe, the Broad Arrow Cafe, he shot, he shot 29 shots. There were 20 dead, 19 headshots, and 12 injured. So the killed to injured ratio is 1.66 to 1. And he was shooting from his hip. Can you can you please explain to me that I mean, Martin Bryan left handed the shooter right handed. That's a bit of a problem. Uh, he was uh, semi retired, no retarded, not not very clever. Never no combat training, no military. Uh, I mean, he he used an air rifle. Please tell me these numbers. Are there any logic to them? Who could do? And all of it was done in 90 seconds. Yeah, so uh, I've, I've looked at it. It's, it's There's multiple shooters. Uh, I don't think if he was involved, he was involved very limitedly so that they could say that he did something uh, and maybe he has some kind of memory of doing something. But uh, it's it's obvious I was I was literally there in Australia. I was on the other coast. I was in Perth, uh, working with an Aussie uh, SAS, and I remember those guys said when that when it happened, it says they're going to take away our guns because they yeah, had been trying to take away their guns, and this was pretty much what did it. It's like I've never seen a mass shooting when there was not an an agenda. Right. You know, they they build up the agenda, and suddenly a mass shooting happens. I wonder why. But my question to you was, mm -hmm. I mean, he was at a cafe 58 kilometers from there when one of these things happened, you know, Michael Bryant, this guy, complete patsy, com absolute complete patsy. Oh. But I'm asking you, who can shoot, who can fire 29 shots? There are no misses, all of them headshots, 20 uh, fatalities, 19 headshots, 20 dead and 12 injured so there's uh, there's a couple of them where he shoots and it kills two people with one shot and shot from the hip according to to um i mean if you ask me that no, is I, on I, a... I can i can sh i can at that time i i could do three headshots in a, in less than a second but um i have to i have to aim them and Everything has to be precise. Everything has to be, if people are moving, screaming, no, it's insane. Now I would have to move and shoot and I could do that. But when I look at, when I look at that scene, it's like multiple shooters, multiple shooters. Um, no one shooting from, you don't shoot from the hip and do that kind of damage. You don't do a headshot from the hip. Why would Absolutely. you? No, no, why, exactly. No one, no one, no professional, no one that's a real shooter does that. And we, we have a very similar thing on Utö with this mass shooting in Norway, where all shots hit more or less. There was no misses. I'm like, that, that is so not possible because yeah. normally also when people, I mean, as soon as the first shot is fired, people start hiding or, or go under the tables or whatever. Yeah, I just wanted to check the number. And then the second in part of this uh, massacre with the same shooter, they say, yeah. 51 shots were fired, two right. dead and one headshot, total injured 21. The precision is completely different. I mean, the, the this shooter, the second one, is not good at all. Or, or maybe that would be more of a natural type of thing, 51 shots fired uh totally injured 21 and uh two dead 
that would be more like a good shooter, but mm -hmm. in a natural. Don't you think same, so? Same, no, no, no. When I shoot, I hit. I'm I'm going to hit my target. E even someone that's minimally trained is not just going to go in and start spraying. I mean, I guess it does happen, but if if he went into one area and had that kind of precision, he's not going to go somewhere else and have that kind of flub. No, you know? no, exactly. It's like Multiple two shooters. two. Yeah. Mm -hmm two different shooters yeah and and also they've been named uh, uh at least i i i don't know how they were uh how they were uh sort of identified but uh, there's this right. former uh, australian uh, police officer who's uh, been very brave to step forward and identify yeah. both shooters and uh there's been yeah. multiple there's re really been multiple people that uh, have said but their testimony wasn't taken their testimony was suppressed that they had counter store counter uh i eye, eyewitness uh stories that's why i say there's multiple shooters because there's eyewitnesses said it it's mm -hmm. like and but they just like all these false flags they they misdirect and they have all these different stories and th mm -hmm. this was the same thing he's like walking yeah. through town and walk killed a bunch of people and walked to the next place and killed a bunch of people it's like mm -mm. a lot of people said it's no this is also Tasmania is an island mm. south of Australia, and this is like the southern, southeastern, more or less most uh, uh, far away, remote place that used to be a, a prison colony. Uh, that is, it's a historical site, and so to to take that, I mean, at that exact site. Uh, where it's connected to subconsciously to prisoners, to violence, to also, they were saying mental illness. One thing I also think is really interesting with these, uh, there were like one family where it said that he he shot the mother and the mother had two kids. They, they It's women and children. Again, if you want to get the emotional things going, uh, there was a, I think there were two daughters. She was like uh, six and three or something like that very young children and there's one photo that is being shown of them every and the photo is taken at that exact spot at this historical site the clothes they have on is one i mean one type then there's footage of the bodies when they're lying on the ground the video footage from the crime scene and it's not the same clothes they're not the same clothes but yeah. the daughter the daughter is dressed in what looks like uh, Second World War concentration camp outfits, like the stripy black and white. Uh, very, that hmm. I've never seen a girl with a dress with these stripes. So it's like, it's almost like there's this psychological operation part there as well, which makes me possibly doubt uh, that part of it or that make that a separate event the the woman and the two kids yeah it's just there there wasn't just... there wasn't a lot of um publicity on it as far as like you know a crime scene or anything like you didn't see any of that mm. uh and i was there in australia you would think in mm. australia they would be showing it like crazy maybe not as much as in the rest of the world but even there in australia they weren't showing stuff and and that had everybody in, up in arms if you will about mm. you know the uh the the bullshit aspect of of that you know uh shooting and then then and, and then guys are like they're absolutely going to take away our guns and they did so yeah um it was it was a false flag event it was uh orchestrated not how they said it was uh multiple shooters uh shooters with ex very very good experience mm. uh so and i think multiple not just not just a couple i think there's like mm. maybe three or four at these sites mm. kind of like what we saw in um new zealand with the with a guy that was going through the mosque and shooting people yeah i, I said right shoot. away that that's all that is is just somebody with some munitions uh there's he's not even shooting people for real uh, I, I didn't see anyone being shot for real. Uh, and, you know, of course, 
that was back when I had YouTube. They took that video down right away. The day, the day that I that I I I walked through it, I was like, "This is be mm -hmm. bullshit, bullshit, bullshit." Like you say, <laughs> and uh, and I just pointed it all out. Look, look at look how this guy's walking, you know, and then look mm -hmm. how these people are in the corner and he's shooting them. That is that they're mm -hmm. it's like they're being hit by it's like a uh this is what we used to do in the military when we had you know simulation training. Mm -hmm. we'd, we'd go through and shoot each other and stuff. It it looked just like it, it sounded like it. It didn't sound mm -hmm. like real gunfire. Mm -hmm. So, And there you had the C-130 planes also that I always point out, you know, these big Hercules that brings in the whole crew, the whole team, the crisis actors, the directors, the marketing agents, all of it comes yeah, yeah. in with these planes. And so I, I asked because I was on, I was live while it was happening more or less uh, on, mm. on a show in New Zealand where we were uh, taking it apart. And while we were live, YouTube shut it down. <laughs> while you're live, wow. They, yeah. While live, they they just cut it. Uh, that's not, that's not real the severe. internet, but I've had yeah. that happen before on some of my shows. Yeah, that's that's you're really but, over the target when they shut you down midstream. But but I was asking. I said to on on the air live there. It, has anyone see seen any C one thirty or big Hercules planes in the area? Mm. Uh, normally a day or two before, and then the day after it happens, they they move everything out. You know the same. And uh, a guy contacted us and he said, "Yeah, I saw two of these planes. They came in uh, really low over Christchurch the day before, the evening before, I think it was." And uh, he said he even they came in so low that he called and asked uh, at the local airport what what the hell is going on. And they said, "Oh, it's just uh, we're having this uh, drill or exercise. You know that uh, they they were flying these planes as an exercise, and then they flew the guy Tyrant. <clears throat> that's an interesting name, also." Uh, the guy that they said did the shooting, when he, then they took him to court, they didn't transport him in a van or anything like that. They transported him in a Hercules plane from Queenstown. I mean, really, it's the, they're just moving the thing around, including the evidence, including every, everybody. I also had reports that uh, these Muslim people, especially the guys that were, uh, where people were that had, they were taking photos with bloody clothes and all of these things. They came from a village up uh, very far up north Pakistan. And they were transported down there just to, I mean, these guys have no clue. They were paid for the day, uh, couldn't be traced, you know. Uh, so they were on all of these photos uh, thinking maybe they were part of a movie shoot or something like that. And boom, back on the plane, back home. Back to Pakistan, yeah. Absolutely. Back to Pakistan, maybe never to be seen again, or they're still up there. Who knows? Mm. So it's like, yeah, the same operation as always. But thank you for pointing this out. I just felt like I would say if correct, if if somebody was shooting from the hip, for one thing, why would they ever do that? But if they were, I think we're looking at a shooter with like a standard for the Olympics or something like that to be able to shoot to 19 headshots and 20 injured in 90 seconds with 29 shots fired even though this cafe was very small this broad arrow cafe it's it's a very small place still but what i think is uh, important the, to the understand only time that... i've ever shot from the hip was when i carried a uh, automatic weapon that had tracer rounds so okay, yeah. from, from, I can fire it from the shoulder, but it, the, the blast from the, uh, there's like a tracer around in it. So mm -hmm. that will, that will blind you over time. So I could, I could accurately shoot from the hip, but I had the tracer around to let me know where I was hitting. Mm -hmm. So I, I was extremely accurate with, accurate with that from the hip, but, um, unless you have tracer around, you're not going to be accurate shooting from the hip. No one does that. Unless you have tracers, and there was no tracers in that. So, mm. yeah, but I think one of the things that is important to point out are these two buses with uh, American tourists that were coming to that specific location. But because of the uh, problem with the ferry delay, 
they weren't weren't there because had had these american tourists been killed instead then we'd had implications on a whole different level with what was going on in the world with the the whole uh thing with the setup for 9 11 for all of these things uh you know where they were trying to really build up the pressure in the world with terror attacks so that we would accept their agenda yeah so, so indirectly a blessing i'm very sorry that other people got killed but yeah. uh, so interesting but, uh the the one in christchurch which was a, also you know to take away people's weapons which it, they did always it it was reversed so instead of like a middle eastern terrorist it was like a right-wing terrorist mm. so they, they they love to do that you know so that yeah. they and this is also where they had that in Norway as well uh you know with the uh, mass shooting there up until then muslim terrorists muslim terrorists muslim terrorists suddenly you had a norwegian that lo good looking blonde guy doing it the other way around right but but i still because many of the of the youngsters that were being interviewed and was on the island were foreigners were with dark hair dark brown eyes but i think that in many people's mind they they just feel terror and mass shootings and they connect it even though it wasn't a norwegian that is said to have carried it out many indirectly blame the foreigners for for it you know the muslim it's the muslims it's the terrorists the, you know and and this Anders Bering Breivik, if you the alleged shooter in Utö, if you go to the Wikipedia uh, page of him, the photo of him, if it's still there, the photo of the Wikipedia article is from a computer game. <laughs> it's like, hmm. and this guy, I've got uh, like exactly. four different. Yep. four different variations of the same guy the, right. the guy that was arrested is not the guy that was taking photo of photos of and the, these ones are not the same guy that was officially in the courtroom and uh, hmm. uh yeah it, it's just such a bizarre world to get into yeah and the uh the the, the christ church shooting with all the with the muslims they were dressed in traditional like northern pakistani like you're talking about uh garb mm. it's like usually people integrate to a certain extent the men start to mm. wear you know local garb and so forth the women sometimes will stay in the burqas or whatever mm. but they were all all of them were uh all... traditional garb so yeah when i saw that i was like ah it's just it's just role playing it's it's like uh they're 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 actors role act actor actors in a role playing skit and they're just being hit by some additions and i think they really were because of the way they reacted uh but it wasn't like you you'd see them get blasted because i've i've seen people being blasted mm. and there's a much different reaction so, yeah and they they didn't no, the, have the same reaction so uh it was it was very suspect. and the whole and that whole setup was almost like identical to a, a video game and i think the if you look at the trend with these mass shootings, it's almost mm -hmm. like they're trying to get to the younger generations as well, because so, so few youngsters are, are following mainstream media, so they need to catch them on somehow. And so there's been a lot of these Superman uh, type of superhero shootings, the Batman shooting, you had the Joker shooting, you had the Spider-Man uh, one in Paris, you had uh, all kinds of things where they I think they're trying to hook onto these. Now we had the fires in, in Copenhagen with a big Batman poster right next to it. Mm -hmm. Massive, massive. Uh, and, uh, and so here with the Christchurch, also the name of the place that they chose, I mean, can it be more Christian Christ church and then Muslims, you have these, the conflict is right there good, in the name as point. well. Good point. Part of the, uh, yep. of the Sayab, I think. And and then the whole setup was like exactly like in a computer game where where the the whole thing even the way that he was holding the rifle it didn't make any sense or this automatic gun no uh, and also one thing that I thought was uh, almost funny is that 
on the Westminster Bridge attack, you had uh, there was this uh, woman that was found dead under a bus. You can see her bum, uh, her bum, and her leg sticking out. Uh, but behind the the wheels of the bus, maybe you can find that photo. Uh, and uh, it, I mean, it looks terrible. She's halfway in under the bus, but on the wrong side of the wheel, so sort of behind the wheel. So she hasn't been killed by the bus, but she has been. But that exact pair of legs and and bum. If you compare that to the woman that was shot in the gutter outside, one of the very few killings where it really looks like there's an impact, where you can see he he shoots her in the head and the head hair goes like that, which can very easily be done with uh, compressed air. If you see from uh, the way uh, movies are uh, filmed, you will see that it's, it's the exact same dummy they use. It's the same legs, the same butt, the same... That, but mus dressed in in uh, Muslim clothes, so I would. It's the global tour of terror. There, it's the same group traveling around doing their stuff over and over again. Maybe you can't it's find a, it. Yeah, it's um, it's showing the bus and it's showing like fuzzy where the woman was now. So. Oh, okay, now they. Yeah, no. They've cleaned, they've cleaned, it looks like they've cleaned it. And there's one spot where they maybe pulled her out. Yeah, so. No, nothing pulling her out or anything. You just see that photo okay. and a police officer. I mean, it looks very dramatic, but it makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. That, that whole Westminster thing also, I mean, that was an incredible joke when you look at it. It, you know, I love when when things like that happen and you got live footage from the site and it's like, oh, my God, breaking news, mass shooting, blah, blah, blah. When the Westminster Bridge was there, you had helicopters, media helicopters uh, over the bridge for hours uh, sending out breaking news headlines. You know, this has just happened in Westminster. And after two hours, you still had people with the, uh, walking in and out with the ambulances and stuff like that after such a long time instead of get the victims into the ambulance and drive to the hospital like that. So people, even there was one guy uh, in a wheelchair, he was wounded. So he was being, what I do when I see these things, I, I pick one person and then I start following and see what are they doing? And they will go around in a circular motion, doing the same around, round, 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 because they're not thinking that geeks like myself would really pinpoint it. And so this guy in this wheelchair had been shot. They took him all the way. And yeah, here's one guy, but that's, uh, can you see the shoes? Yeah, that's what I want to point out. Yeah, the shoes are off. It's yeah. like, what? And bloody, and she's yeah. like right over the top of him. Yeah, that's fake. But uh, the, well, the shoes are there all the time. But anyway, the guy in the wheelchair, I followed him and they took him from one end of the bridge all the way to the other side and then turned around and co came back all the way and then back again and all and back like that to make it look very dramatic. Also, the way that the vehicles were placed with the ambulances were absolutely blocking the view in so that nobody could see from the outside. I spoke to ambulance drivers. Is this a way that you would normally park? Absolutely not. They said we would be fired right away because we're, these vehicles are completely blocking it. And then on right on the side of the Westminster Bridge, uh, there's a big hospital. So did that? Did they take the victims there? I mean, the hospital was just right there. No, they went on the other side of the road, uh, of the street where the uh the marriott hotel was that's where they took the crisis actors so you see they're going the wrong direction as well the whole thing is just uh, it's one of my favorites it's uh i pointed that one out uh, i predicted that one uh two months before it happened from oh, wow. cl clues i found at the melbourne uh, do you remember the donut attack where this guy was driving around in circles like me spinning around his car yeah, yeah, the blurred image there you see there. It's th these are the legs. Can you see that she's on the wrong side of uh, uh, yeah, of the so bus to you, to do? When you click it now, it doesn't doesn't show it. It gives like the one guy with his shoes off, and yeah. they blur. They're blurring everything now. 
that that's not even a, a real body, the one that is uh, there. I, I want to say this is why my my uh, research world is so important because so many of these things have been deleted or taken away or blurred mm -hmm. or stuff so that you can't uh, uh, you can't really find them anymore. Yeah, it's, it shows like a video gallery of thirty, but when you click on it, it won't show it now. So yeah, so the investigators. If you don't save it, and that's what I, that's, I'm sure you've noticed the same thing. If you don't save this stuff, uh, they take it down because they like flash it. And everybody's like, oh, wow, look at that. And then you come back to look for it and it's gone. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm saving everything. This is the difference. Uh, I, I know you big, have a, an amazing it, library. It's amazing. a big part of my life. It's just save, 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 yeah. save, put it in the right folder. It's very time consuming, but... Uh, very rewarding because you go back like just a month later and you think oh i'm just gonna where's it gone boom it's just you can't it's find gone. it yeah it's uh it's the but official you narrative. It in your library you have it in uh like huge huge amounts of information it's amazing yeah it's it's just keeps growing it keeps growing it's more than six terabytes now wow and yeah a lot a lot but uh you can find it on my website, uh, lightandconspiracies.com. Michael, did I mention 11 Strong to you? It's a... Uh, yeah, have, let, 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 me, uh, let me pull that up. I have it. I have... Uh, I've had several requests over the years of people saying, isn't there a way where we can sort of meet more intimate, uh, you know, so to get a more tight group instead of the only chances there are there are like uh, from webinars and so on but uh, that they would like to be closer also to if you go down a little bit uh, it's not there I think it's up at the top otherwise which one get informed or yeah no no right there 9 11 no nope Oop, nope sorry <laughs> If you just click on my name, boom, like that. Yeah, it's the one, the one at the top uh, left there, eleven strong. Can you see it right there on a mission? Now the slideshow moved, so no, you have to go down, down, and where's it? Begin here. If you take that slideshow back to the first, just you got these dots oh, underneath. I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Boom. There it is, 11 strong. There it is, okay. Yeah, so so I've had requests about, uh, you know, making a more intimate, uh, more small circle where uh, a few handpicked people uh, can have sort of a more closely tight uh, group uh, exchange information. And also, if you want to learn more about how, uh, how I uh, do what I do, and so on. So we've come up, Kim came up with this 11 strong. So we're going to make a group of 11, myself included, like 10 plus me that will go together for like a four month journey where we'll meet uh, once or twice a month and uh, uh, for, for like at least two hours every time and really go into depth and so on. So if there's anyone interested, please uh, contact me or Kim. Kim at lightonconspiracies.com uh, and she will then inform you about what is uh, uh, what is uh, part of it. I, I'm also throwing in a lot of stuff, uh, including the uh, research vault and uh, oh, wow. all kinds of stuff there. So, but I, I would very much like that as well because sometimes it's frustrating to touch on something you just scratch on the surface and then you part ways and uh, so this is going to be more like a, a four-month journey together so very nice very nice all right so that's good i i, I wish Th you luck thank you so much and i i look uh look forward to uh hearing what you guys uh, come up with it'll be good yeah sounds good I tell you, sometimes we got like almost a two-hour show. This time, it's uh, 
it's calmed down a little bit here after this very intense April. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, it has. It's, it's uh, weird. Yeah, but it's April gearing up for some... something. I think June is something. Something about June. I, I saw yeah. something about June. All, like all roads lead to June. It's like <laughs> okay. No, but uh, if you look at uh, these type of operations, April is always really intense. It's oh. uh, it's the month of sacrifice and fire. And the fires and sacrifice is just like boom, 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 nonstop. And this month was like, I've never seen anything like it. And then in May here, it has this tendency to, to yep. calm down a little bit. Yep. But then around the 25th of May, I just want to point it out here, Normally, there's an attack somewhere to divert the attention away from the Bilderberg meeting, which is uh, the first uh, weekend of June. So more or less every single year, it's going to go. And here comes the Bilderberg and boom, something happens that will divert the attention. So please be aware. I don't know. It's different every year. Uh, also, dip, I don't know if it has to do... I would guess that it has to do with where the the uh, annual building board meeting is going to happen that year, but something that will make the attention go that way. The Bilderberg meetings, I don't know now that, I mean, so many people are aware of these meetings that it's very hard for them to continue uh, as they did in the old days. But uh, yeah, please just be aware. of. And uh, anyone around Cape Coral, uh, I... This is also the home of Dr. Mercola. Mercola. Mm -hmm. Mercola. Please be aware. Of, I don't not. I don't know how to. To do. To stop these things, except by exposing them. Right. I know that in, in Chile, a lot of the people have started painting their their houses blue and their roofs blue and whatever, which is great in one way. I think. But also one thing that I could that I would see as very interesting would be like if somebody in this area of Cape Coral, for instance, could do like drone footage of the area and just see where are the blue roofs, where are this uh, these uh, blue roofs, and then compare them to uh, the smart city layouts of uh, the future, and if there's any kind of connection like that then i feel whoa we're really onto something and let's mess it up for them let's blow it up uh, not physically but expose it massively so that they will not be able to pull it off yeah wow yeah so hopefully somebody out there will uh will take that on board and look at that we'll see yeah that would be very interesting i can almost guarantee you it will follow the same the same guidelines mm -hmm. hmm. yeah fascinating all right ole thanks a lot all uh, right michael we covered some really good stuff actually uh i think people will find that this uh our little uh back and forth quite interesting i hope so i hope so yeah. all right you have a great one you too Give thanks my a best lot to tracy we will over and out chew boom <laughs>